Okay, it is time for another project around the house and I have the perfect one. I actually need a table for the porch of my shop and I, I started to just buy one, but I thought, you know what? I can make one, that'll be a great video. And so here we are. The toughest thing we're gonna do is add in a new technique to the wood burning today. I've never done it before, we're gonna give it a go. So join me and let's do this project together. Okay, so I've got one of these giant 24 inch rounds. It's perfect for a table, a small table. I don't need it to, real, to be real big. I just, I like to burn outside sometimes. It makes for great light, great video, and I need a place to sit. So I'm, I usually just sit on the floor of the porch and I have this like tiny little stool that I set my burner and my artwork on. And um, I'm gonna be honest, you guys, I, I turned 40 this year, it is not, easy to get up and down all of that off the floor as it used to be so i need a table and a chair i've got a chair now i need a table so i thought i'd just make one instead of going out and buy one i've got my template ready and i'm just going to do the power crafters logo this doesn't need to be anything fancy because it's just going to be uh, for me to use and it's probably going to get messy because i'm going to be painting and doing different things on it and i partly want to test out um, this technique with my Dremel. So I'm gonna be doing my template kind of in stages. The first stage is the stage that I'm going to hollow out with my Dremel. So there's, in our logo, there's a part that says wood flame stain. I'll put the logo here so you can see it. And I'm going to add that to the wood first with my template and then I'm gonna hollow it out with the Dremel and fill it with a resin. So here we go, let's do this. Let's get to hollowing these letters out. All right, you guys, so I've got my template here. Um, you can see it's not 100% pieced together, but that's fine, I don't need it to be. I'm only gonna be tr tracing this bit here, the wood flame stain for right now. Okay guys, so I have got my Dremel here and I went ahead and loaded this bit in there, this sort of pointed bit. And I've got a couple of extras here just in case that one doesn't go well. I mean, the truth is guys, I've never done this before. I have never like used the Dremel to sort of hollow out lettering or anything like that. So we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna see how it goes. I may need to switch bits and one may be better than the other, but I thought I'd start with a pointed one so I could kind of outline these letters. I'm using the Dremel 8220. Uh, it's pretty high speed, it goes all the way up to 30, but I'm gonna keep it pretty low. I've got some goggles here. Always, always use goggles and safety equipment when you can, when, when you're working with this kind of stuff. So here we go. I'm, what I'm gonna try to do is sort of outline the edges and then eat away at the letters. Okay, you guys, so I changed the bit to this more um, saw-like type bit. You can see it's got these edges that kind of, as it rotates, it eats away at the wood. It works a lot better. So we're gonna use this one and see how it goes. Okay guys, I have got my Dremel bit here. I went with another rounded bit. It seems to do the best uh, as far as getting these edges. So what I'm just trying to do is just clean these up. You can see there's like these little um, loose edges here that are kind of hanging out. So I'm just gonna try to clean it up as best I can. All right, you guys, it, these are nice and cleaned up. The edges are nice and crisp now. Um, I'm going to mix up the resin. I'm gonna do three different colors. I've got these tiny little cups so I can mix up some resin and some eyedroppers to kind of drop the resin down in there. And I'm gonna mix it up and start pouring some resin. So here we go.
Now I'm just going to use my Chandler tool to ever so slightly heat it up. And that's going to help get some of those bubbles up to the top. So we don't want to have leftover bubbles. Okay, now I'm just need to let these dry overnight and then we can sand, come back, do the second layer of our transfer and then start burning. Okay, you guys, it's nice and sanded. I have got a nice smooth surface to work with here. I didn't sand very much on that upper part because I left the pencil marks of where the template goes. Um, you can see the sanding has caused it to kind of cloud up a little bit. Once I add the, the varnish on top and kind of wet it, it'll, it'll give me a, like a nicer, um, sort of shinier look. I'm gonna grab my template place it again and retrace the rest of it so I can start burning the rest of the sign. So just like with all my pieces, I'm outlining all of the artwork. I like to use the, the straight edge tip here outline all of the work and then I fill in with texture as you can see here. So now I'm just I've got my shader tip and that's this sort of rounded horseshoe tip. Um, I love it because it makes these like horseshoe patterns like this. And it just makes really great texture when you're filling in a large space. You see how much smoke that puts out. So it's, it's really handy to have the exhaust here to pull that out. That's a little bit too high. Well, let me go down. That may still be. Okay, so I'm done with the burn. It is time to stain or varnish. And you know, I actually hadn't considered staining it just because I don't normally stain work. Um, but Clay suggested it and I thought, you know what, a stain might look good because the, the word stain is white and it's kind of hard to see. So I thought maybe a, a little bit of a lighter stain will help bring out some contrast there, but not stain it so dark that it covers up or washes out my burn too much. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is just cleaning it off. I have this brush that I keep here uh, on my stain table just for this purpose. I like to kind of get into the grooves, especially when I do these deep textures and really get out any leftover like carbony bits or anything like that down into the grooves. And I just dust it off. I wanna make sure it's really, really clean before I add any stain or any varnish. Um, I'm using one of these uh, little spongy pads. I already stained the back, so now I'm gonna stain the front. And I'm just gonna wipe with the grain here. And I like that, so it's, I, can, I feel like I can see the word stain a little better. You see how it's popping against the, the, um, the stain a little bit. And it hasn't overwhelmed my burn at all. It's just giving it a nice, richer wood color. Okay guys, it is time to varnish. Now I've already covered the back here, so I'm just gonna flip this over and start coating the front. So this is the spar urethane that I'm using. It is rated to protect against sunlight, rain, and moisture. So I like to use this for projects that are gonna be outside. All right, so we are finally at the final step. I have let this dry 
for a couple of days actually I've got three coats of this bar urethane you can see it's got a nice little sheen going which I like I don't like full-on gloss but I do like a little bit of a of a sheen on the top it has kind of like a little bit of a nice reflection going I've got my hairpin legs my drill and this is the pack that came in the kit with the legs and uh, I'll pop a link below if you guys want to check these out I got them on Amazon they actually come four in a pack but because the table is going to be pretty small um, I'm only going to use three of the legs three is plenty to hold this little 24 inch roundup so here we go and this is going to be pretty easy because they're you know the the hairpin legs under on the underside are flat so you just set it down like that and then screw them in okay so it's all done you can see my little table here it's got its three little legs and it is ready now i've got a little workspace outside yay and i have to um oh there's kit kat she's coming to enjoy the glory of the new table kit kat what do you yeah what do you think yeah i know you want in don't you 